this. Uh, let's see. I guess the, the, the major change is the, uh, you know, that we've received a letter of resignation from one of our public works employees. And uh, we need to have a discussion about employee uh, retention. Okay. Anything else? Uh, we might have some members of the public uh, with questions about the uh, law enforcement meeting we had and community safety. Okay. Community safety, anything else? No, I think that's it. Maybe executive session for oh, uh, executive session for an update on you. The honor. Yeah. It's not. It's not. All right. Sorry. Do you guys? What do you want? Yeah. Okay. Any other items? Uh, no new or changed items exactly, but I think we could probably move at least to item nine until after the executive session. Uh, and just cover it if we have time. Otherwise, okay. you've got a printed copy of the first draft of the record protection policy. Uh, it, it's definitely not ready to go yet. Just wanted to make you aware of it, make a quick presentation on it. If we don't have time tonight, yeah, no more. About it. We only have the big packet tonight. Well, this is all new. We dedicated 15 minutes. Uh, I'm sure this is what most people are going to want. Take a deep dive into So, we had talked last time, Eric, about how we want to do it. I offered to just read things off if you'd like me to. If you don't want to do that, it's fine too. Well, go ahead. All right. While you're doing that, you can sign me to take over. But okay, there'll be talk to it. Okay. Um, so the first line item is is the AFLAC at $101. Next is adding insights and analytics um, for record preservation. Um, Grosso fuels, it's the price of any good equipment, fuels and oil charge of $944.57. Um, to or from the village, uh, $218.60 of that. From the village, I assume. So please stop me if you want to go on it. Wellington Communications, outside repairs and parts, install of the Tandem International. Um, Jen Burton, wood fired oven, $364.91. That one for reimbursing someone directly. We want to find out that we have a new procurement policy. And one for the next one. Okay. Reimbursing people directly. Yes. That's uh, what we're going to have to discuss. They go out and 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 um, pepperoni, miscellaneous deli, um, and crushed potatoes. Maybe and more. Yeah. Okay. We can say we do have an assumption to say that from pizza. You know, we're going to do this reimbursement or something. But anyway, we'll deal with that next one. Okay. Syntops um, uniform, $116.50. Um, 
another uniform charge of kind of $5.33. Uh, Community National Bank, Union Bank for the loader, a loan payment, $29,340.31. Uh, and also to the Community National Bank County Tax of $2,668.41. So be changed, that should be interest. So interest, not tax, not tax. If you were doing this for us, Mary, I would have found it in the park. Okay. <laughs> um, Country Home Center, the Trailhead Head Building, Liberty Ridge Cap for $409.60. County uh, Plumbing and Heating, Toilet Service, um, Building Maintenance, $52.62, due from the town, from the village. $50.63, I assume they actually owe what to do rather than a cent off. So I circle this? That means it's a, they're probably in the fly. Uh-oh, uh, so this round is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, paging, airtime fee for a phone, $35. Back up that on the phone. Does yep. that mean we are paying it and we will be due? We're going to pay the full bill for the county. It goes to the reimburse us back. Okay. Then we go. <clears throat> Sorry. Right. So the um, page of that phone charge for $35. Okay. Uh, all of the time we guys have pages that get service in areas where our cell phones don't. Okay. The World Town Mural, one thousand dollars. Okay. Wow. Cool. Okay. Um, for anything more than that, love the world cap. Yeah, okay. Better, uh, Fisher, Fisher Auto Parts, the True Fleet Parts and Supplies, $10.55. And it looks like that is for a brass coupler. Um, and Sorry, okay. There's a brass coupler, there are parts and supplies, just generically, which are 10 dollars 55 cents. A brass coupler is 5 59 Easy mix paint is $13.35, and a booster pack is $329.99. What's the booster pack? That's what jump started to do. It is your jump and carry booster pack. Yeah, that's all. Like Jason and Richard both signed off. The booster pack was down there, it's tied up in a recent scenario. We can't have one. Great big graphics sign at your park $90 and 90 cents. Um, Uh, let's see. Greenland, this is Lantern Johnson, something solar, electricity. Ready? Uh, $361.30 is one charge, $320, sorry, $235.26 is one charge. Holcomb electricity is $134.44. Street lights are $109. There. So the town pays Green Lantern for the electricity. Instead of the village, we get credit from our employees. We have parents and the solar panels there. The one at Katie Wars? Yeah. Uh, we bought into it and the village didn't. Uh, so, uh, and we, for most of these, we pay half the 
utilities, the whole thing a little complicated. But so the people who pay the yeah pre. Um, okay. it's a lesser yes. And at this point, I think in our contract, it's a I think you switched over to fixed rate. Uh, and I got to check it was so many years at a lesser rate, and then it went to a fixed rate that we believe would probably be less, but there wasn't a, a guarantee after so many years. Uh, but our assumption was that uh, <clears throat> electricity prices were probably not going to go down. Okay. Um, home maintenance, home maintenance service, janitorial, uh, janitorial services, building maintenance and supplies, and building maintenance and repair, 250, 125, and 180, total up $930. Um, Rosemary, this one has a different date range than on the invoice. I don't know if that matters or not. Okay. Um, and then also there is a, a six-day charge for cleaning up the building for the bathroom and the kitchen. Or not. Don't we have a contract with, with the interior? Yeah, that's who that is. That's who that is. That's a business name. And then there's also that return back in the village. Okay. Jewett property um, interest is $176.91. Jewett property payment, $3,339.22. Uh, Johnson Farm, a hardware rental. Construction. Okay. Just fly up. Exactly, but there's an excavator rental of $5,450. Uh, this month, yes, the rent it for Fox Lot, and uh, we think we'll be able to do a little bit more to hire us. It's all in the Yeah, uh, so it, it does show up in here. It's approval but it yeah. was already ordered uh, it says the dates on it are eight well it's unclear whether it's 8 16 or 8 20 but either 8 16 or 8 20 through 9 13. Okay. all right that would be the last time we were here okay yep. now the time that we have uh that we rented mostly for other friendship Okay, um, then there's also wait, no, wait, where about office supplies, sorry, duct tape goes to the office supplies for $5.09 and screws, nuts, and bolts for $74. Lamont County Sheriff's Department. Um, Quarterly communications of seventeen six thirty and twenty five cents, and the sheriff's department is one thousand four dollars and fifty three cents. Sorry, fifty three dollars and fifty cents. That is one hundred twenty four thousand fifty three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, and Okay. Uh, Lori Mark who reporting over payment for office fees fifteen dollars? I don't see that in here. Must have had something for that one, was there? Yeah, they should look like a credit card receipt from someone like this. 
they want to come back to it. So just to make a note here, we've gone through about half of this and we take up our 15 minutes. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna have to do. Let's go back for ten more minutes. Did you use ten minutes? Maybe you need it. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, Milton Rental and Sales, the mulch paint and calcifier, eight hundred forty dollars and twenty cents. Nor tracks. For the white noise alarm, $186.14. What's that? That is the self smart self-adjusting white noise alarm. I'd have to ask, I don't something for the work. Typically, most of the things we buy from Nortrax are that piece of equipment. Then back up. For the loader. Oh, for the loader. Yeah. Yeah. North Texas. We get some heavy equipment from them, but that particular part, I don't know what it does. That's pretty fun. Okay. Uh, let's see. Percy's for gravel and stone, $900. Um, tree bush removal and mowing. From Pete's equipment and sales, six thousand two hundred seventy-seven dollars and seventy-four cents. Robert and Sons Lawn Care for ground mowing, cemetery mowing, recreation field mowing, Holcomb ground maintenance, and from the village is to four hundred thirty-six dollars and fifty-five uh, sixty-seven cents for a total of one thousand three hundred eighty dollars from Robert and Sons. Staples, supply, office supplies, $50.55. These questions about what's in there. Here. Okay. Um, Page and Fletcher, legal expenses, $3,750.50. Invest equipment and maintenance, and it also says supplies. So, sorry, supplies seven dollars and 75 cents. Union Bank tandem truck payment $2,827.52, and interest on loans $93.26. Right off, she got I'll have to start them afterwards. Okay. Um, the axle bearing from Viking Hives for $12.45. And then the village, a total of $19,835. And there's a big packet of stuff here. Outside, uh, nothing that stands out as a huge expense that is postage or insurance. 75% is payroll cost. Okay. okay. Um, let's go to Johnson. Beamers, um, total of $4,038.45.55 for retirement, amount due from the village. And then, uh, extracted, matching. And then, Vista, uh, Vista Value website of Historical Society, $270. And then lastly, the working got septic for $465.
by saying aye. Plan purchases. 
put a list of things. So. We have a list. Uh, let's see. I've got a little bit more information on the item two, the pressure washer. Uh, a new pressure washer will cost about forty-three hundred dollars, and repairing our current one will cost about five hundred dollars. Uh, but our current one has needed almost a thousand dollars in repairs over the last two years, and uh, is likely to continue to need repairs. Um, I don't think it's quite at the level where we necessarily want to get rid of it, but it is starting to old. It is uh, early 2000s, so it, it's over 15 years old. Is this the one they use for uh, culverts or frozen? Yes, and uh, right now we're dealing with it because uh, we want to wash the undercoating on the trucks off. Uh, and so we need a, a heated high pressure uh, stream for that. Uh, but we also use it during the winter, like you said, to clear properties. Okay. Uh, so you want to go down through each one of these? Well, if, if you've got thoughts on whether you'd like to say that this is part of our small equipment, so it's not part of our capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have particular thoughts, uh, uh, whether you would like us, if you lean one way or the other, we're, we're kind of not sure. We're going to do a little bit more looking around to see if, what kind of life people have gotten out of these. But I'm a little bit concerned because we've had so many repairs in short order on it. On the pressure washer, so far. Yeah. So that's why I asked Jason to get a quote for a replacement. Yeah, we're close to having replaced almost all the moving parts at this point. That's very expensive. If it keeps costing us, you know, five hundred to eight hundred dollars a year, we're going to pay for a new washer pretty quick. We're just on a road budget for that. There's a. In the, in the highway department budget, there is a line item for small equipment. Uh, this would be a, an expensive item for that, that line. Um, I don't happen to know what that is. Rosemary, you probably don't know. Um, like I said, I don't think we're really ready right now to make that decision, but there's a good chance we will be before. Uh, before our next meeting, because we need to get it back and in service uh, so that we can undercoat the trucks in time before winter arrives. Uh, I guess what's probably more critical is when they need it in the winter time or in the spring. Yeah. I mean, they got to get those culverts blown out or the get washed out roads. Yeah. Yeah, we have an immediate need for it, but past just what we need, you know, later this month, we also have a, a serious need for it to be a good working order for the rest of the month. You know, for the course of 20 years, that's what the old ones last at the most. It's not that crazy construct. So are you looking for movement on that today? End of the month, do they want to talk about it next meeting or do you want instruction now? If you're willing to let us make the decision with just the highway department, that would be kind of my, my preference. But if the board you know has particular concerns or questions and you want to wait till the next meeting, I think you can wait till the next meeting. But my preference would be, you know. That you would approve for us for up to forty five hundred, and then I can come back with less. I will spend less money than that, whether it's acquiring a new one or making repairs to this one. Uh, we're talking about all the items before we sure. respond to this. I would pick a couple of that. I'll back up to the first one. Yeah. So. Uh, the excavator is going to be $4,900 for one month. We're also renting a 
tilt bracket um, for an additional $400 for the month. Uh, that will make it a little bit easier to do some of the placement that we need it for uh, for the thing that projects we're doing. Uh, this is mostly going on Fox Lot and we get reimbursed for most of the costs uh, through that. Uh, pressure washer, I have three winter tires uh, for our the truck that we bought last year. Uh, we need eight new tires. We've got a few competing posts here uh, for new or refurbished tires. Uh, we tend to buy refurbished tires, but and right now the uh, yeah the, the prices are, are a little competitive. But find was input on that one as well. So this truck we just bought last year already needs new tires? This includes swapping a few sets around. Uh, that's the truck is going on, but I think that the, when we sell the trucks, if we just put new tires on them, we keep the tires when we sell them. Mm -hmm. uh, so the tires that were on this truck we're not new when we bought the truck. And I have to get Jason's help with exactly which tires these were. Uh, but these were, we did not go through a set of tires before. Uh, even if they were refurbished, that we still didn't go through a single set of tires year. That's not a preference. They prefer new tires, but we're served pretty well by the, the recap tires. Uh, you know, new tires have more bite to them, will last a little bit longer, uh, less likely to uh, puncture or break. Uh, but we frequently buy recap tires, generally don't have problems with them. Uh, moving on, item four. Uh, culverts are, we've used quite a few. Uh, we're low on stock, um, and we'd like to start restocking a uh, few of the culverts. Um, exactly how much that will cost will vary a little bit based on what they have in stock and what we need. You know, we won't be buying, you know, all of one particular size. It'll be when we go down, we really have stock. So uh, we're looking for a, an upper limit on that one. We'll spend less than $4,000 on that. Um, then the hemlock planks for the water inverts. Um, item five. Oh, excuse me, over item five. Item five, uh, new teeth for the cutting edge on the grater. Um, we'd like to get this in before winter uh, for a new. Uh, the teeth edge on, on the grader. Uh, and then the, the hemlock planks for water fridge. So I guess one way to do this is uh, put it before the board. Is there anyone that has any concerns with any of the items? Or are we uh, happy with letting the uh, I believe Brian's department pick the best course? Uh, well, I'm curious what we have for, I mean, do we need culverts or are we just wanting to stock culverts and our price is higher right now than they historically or usually are? Uh, we would not be buying any that were more than the historic prices. Okay. Uh, uh, but this would be for stock. This wouldn't be for a particular project. We like to have them in stock though, uh, because it, it makes us a lot more responsive when we're doing these. You know, for example, we're going to use several culverts when we do Fox Lot. Uh, but if we had to try and buy and wait on culverts, we might end up paying more for them um, on the local roads mailing list. I forget what town it is, but there's a town that can't get culverts and is sending letters out to all the other towns working across Vermont trying to gather more. Um, 
we regularly have a, a small stock of folders in a couple of different sizes. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to make inflated prices for stock. Well, one thing I would say on line up two is you know, what I would personally say is use your best judgment, but I would not be against buying it anymore. I think a, a frozen culvert in a high water situation, you can do that $4,300 and wash that road pretty quickly. You really need that thing. Yep. So I wouldn't be against purchasing. So since Mike's not here, are you getting more than one? <laughs> more than one bit? Let's pressure washer or are you like the bulwark? If, if we go with the, the new one, we'll get a couple of books on that. Uh, with the culverts, um, we'll ask around a little bit, but that's something that we regularly buy from. Department Garden. Um, the total price is high, it is high enough, but the individual price is fairly low. Mm, yeah. yeah, and they, they um, you know, uh, between distance traveled and time and their price, uh, it wouldn't hurt for us to check just to make sure, but. Okay. Anyone else other than that? Letting them have the discretion. I uh, also you got the note from uh, uh, from recreation about what she has planned in the office. We don't currently have any planned expenses that rank. Wait, what are you talking about? You're talking about the racks. Yeah, uh, that's under your, your threshold, but it's yeah. uh, and, and inside the office, we don't have anything that, that ranks. But uh, we, after the law enforcement study, we were talking about buying uh, some uh, neighborhood watch signs and mountain those. The total amount isn't going to rise to, it'll be less than a thousand dollars, it'll be just a couple hundred dollars for. Signs a little bit more for poles to mount them on, but it's not going to. I believe the whole thing will be less than five hundred dollars. Have you talked to the sheriff's department? Uh, I have. I have gotten to, my suggestion to the sheriff's, sheriff's department is that we split the cost between the town and the sheriff's department. They seem willing. Um, then we've gone back and forth about how many signs, and uh, so we, we've got to actually. Think this is what we're going to buy. And, uh, should we should sort of roll that in the community safety discussion? We can uh, because it isn't very much. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make you aware of it because it's yeah. not a planned expense. It's something that's a little bit unusual, yeah. uh, but it is a lower dollar. Okay. Anything else? No. How do you? Uh, I guess I'm going to ask. One more thing, Oscar, a little bit of feedback. How does this format work for you for reviewing plan purchases? Just taking a couple minutes. Uh, and the way I'm using it is going to be items over $1,000, which is by our procurement policy, and then kind of unusual items uh, that wouldn't really have been anything that we planned for. I like it. The only thing that I think would be helpful, yep. Ryan, which is what I'm doing manually, <laughs> is writing on that top line, like what the range of cost could be on the top line, just so I would dance, like I could add up in my head on it. Okay. But I think this, this is fine. It tells us what we do now. And it's the first crack at it, too. So, you know, we can refine it a little bit uh, as we go. Yeah, that's right. I would agree. I would expect it's going to change over time. This is our first crack at this way of doing business for us. If there's no further comments, 
concerns starting to your report? Oh, I think we might have uh, members of the public. Uh, I think she's part of your report, isn't it? But I, 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 I'm not sure the report the safety discussion for this. That would be just for we went in the second session. But oh, right. here is part of the yeah. same bridges, right? No. Uh, well, no. Well, I guess you probably wouldn't have comments about that, too. Yeah, doesn't need to be public comment. We'll just, I'm happy to do it when we get to the twin bridges. Okay. Well, Brazil, Brazilian. All right. So, our first item. Is a uh, discussion about the flood resilient communities. So, this is a fund, and uh, I believe it's Seth is joining us online. So, if we need, if you have more questions than I can answer, which will be pretty easy to do, uh, we've got Seth that we can go back with. Uh, but basically, this is about providing. Uh, a greater flood resiliency by conserving land uh, and either allowing it or uh, in some cases doing a little bit of work to make it uh, uh, more adaptable to flood. Uh, in the case of Holmes Meadow, we probably would uh, do a little bit of work to try and make it a little more, you know, I don't know if you've been out there, but it's got a real shelf between where the, the river comes up and then dramatically rises up to the general level of the meadow. If we ease that transition a little bit, I imagine that uh, it would probably be better, but I'm not the river engineer. So we would be relying on our expertise. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the what are they moving forward from us? Uh, uh, just a commitment. Commitment to apply? A uh, commitment to apply. We would, there is no local match. It will not cost us anything. It'll be a little bit of my time, uh, a pretty decent amount of Seth's time at the LCPC. Um, but we send the benefit for it. What's the board's pleasure? Happy about commitment? No. What does that mean, Pat? Uh, we need a we need some work with uh, David on this. We're, we've reached out to him. Uh, we haven't had a firm commitment other than his continued interest in the problem. Uh, but I don't know from their end if they need him to agree to the sale yet or if his interest in continuing the discussion is what they need. Uh, my impression is that they're getting what they need from him. Yeah, I'm still supportive of this. Yeah, I, think, I think it's a good economic development project because, because it, it could enable more development on other sites. I think it's a good public safety because it reduces our risk of flooding. I think that if nothing else, it could greatly reduce the risk of flooding right there on Route 15 across from this property. And if that's the only impact it has, that's yeah. Yeah. It's also a valuable uh, recreational resource. Yeah, uh, we will be able to use it for recreation programs. It will the regulations around it. I don't have yet, but I imagine it will be pretty similar to what we have on the skate park, which was also acquired as part of a. Uh, Flood program. So I'm imagining that the restrictions are going to be pretty similar. So we have to be very careful about how we impact the potential for flooding and in that location by doing things like landscaping uh, and shaping. They're pretty flexible. So I think it will be a great recreation asset also. Where's the budget? So will we? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have uh, yeah, move to apply to uh, we need uh, move to apply to this grant. Yep. Okay. 
The motion and second, no discussion. So I assume the next step after action is to throw something at the big public insurance. I think we do will be this this won't be town won't be negotiating that purchase. Okay. Um, you know, we are a party to it, but we're not raising the money for it. We're not making the purchase. We're not making the sale. Uh, we just end up with the owner. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it takes a firm commitment from us because we will be acquiring land. But, you know, we're, we're not negotiating the purchase and sale of the land. Cool. Anything else? All those in favor, six by six. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Seven. Industrial car. All right. So there are two pretty likely uh, programs that I'm looking at right now for the light industrial park. Um, the first one is uh, a Brutland area. Uh, as part of the Build Back Better program, they're going to be taking uh, some project ideas for economic development. And the project ideas, the way the program is shaping up, and the program hasn't been finalized, but the way the program is shaping up, it looks like it heavily favors regional approaches. There's a group in Rutland that uh, is also cross-promoting with a little bit in New York and uh, around Vermont that it looks like we'd be able, we might be able to join uh, for uh, business parks and industrial parks. Uh, so I'm intending on continuing conversations with them and trying to get on board with that program. Is Seth still involved? Yes, Seth has been really helpful. The, this particular one, uh, Matt, uh, I don't remember Matt's last name, but the uh, gentleman at EDA helped, helped us make a connection with uh, other folks in Vermont. There's another program making this an application for the same funds uh, going around Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire uh, that's on dairy production uh, that I'm really interested in, but I think that their program is going to want, uh, I don't think they're going to help, I don't think they're going to be a good fit for where we are in development. I think that they might be a good fit for us if we can find another way to finish our initial development and then possibly work with them on acquiring some land and a lot in, the, in there. So I'm gonna keep going with conversation with them, but I don't think they're gonna be a great fit for us. Uh, but we, I have a meeting with them also. I'm, I'm very positive for the outlook. I think that we would be a really good fit for the, a really good fit for the program and the way they're drawing the program. Uh, they're probably looking for things further down the line. Uh, the last one is uh, the project-based TIF uh, was something that we had supported with the state legislature um, and it hasn't gone anywhere. There's said that received some direction from the state that suggested that if we draw up a specific program example, that the state might rather than passing rules for project-based TIF across the state, that if they're approached by a couple ideas and particular programs, they might approve those individually without approving a whole system. So this is a strategy that we could pursue that might help us raise the cash that we need for the grant match uh, in order to do the infrastructure. I think this is really interesting. Um, I think that this is probably going to need a, a, a pretty high level of board support for it. I, I'm anticipating that this is going to be fairly time intensive because there, there isn't a program that we're going to. We'd be kind of suggesting the outline of what the program would look like. Uh, Seth and I are both interested in working on this, but it's not an easy look. Who would you be suggesting it to? Uh, we would take this to our 
state representatives and have to have them introduce it to the state legislature. So it would require legislature. It would it would require the legislature to uh, you know to an action. So this this is again what well, some of the state legislature is thinking about instead instead of approving a system for project based tips is to approve individual projects. I don't love that idea. Yeah, I, I'm wondering how successful that's a lot of work trying to get legislature, even with our the delegation having body. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd want to know. I would want to believe that it could be successful, a high likelihood. I'd like to hear, yeah, I would like to hear their legislators with legislators would even have the time and energy to put into trying to get us the money, which I just don't. Maybe that's a good thing to do first, just poll our legislators and see if it they think it's even get off the ball. Right. Yep. So I'll talk to our legislators, I'll find out a little bit more about see if we can do a little bit more narrowing in on what we think this is going to take from us uh, to, to draw up. Um, I guess I've thrown around tip a few times. Uh, you know, I'll give a brief explanation. TIF is called tax increment financing. It's a uh, system that's used across the country. Uh, in Vermont, it's been used a number of times, like uh, Winooski has been a big success story for this, uh, St. Albans, a few other cities, um, where what they do is they, they borrow money, uh, they, they take the current property assessment and an estimated property assessment after they complete improvements. And the difference between those two, they borrow money uh, so that they can finance the improvements that they want to have. So on something like the like industrial park, rather than assessing it on the whole town, we assess it on the like industrial park. We think that once we complete improvements, we'll raise the property values by X number of dollars so we can borrow money based on that. And then we would be dedicating the increased tax dollars to repay the Rather than using money out of the general fund to repay the money. That was a quick high level version of what a chip is. Uh, they've been very successful in a number of towns and cities. They would be a heavy lift for small towns, which is why we're interested in the project based chips rather than the big community wide chip program uh, that the state currently has. And yeah, uh, they're still ironing out the details of what it will look like for smaller communities. So we don't know how that's going to go. I'll find out a little bit more information about it, find out if our local delegation supports it, and have another report on that for you before we invest any serious time and money. Okay. It's a time and energy. So, what can you tell me? This Rutland Area Regional Project, who, who is that? Who are you talking about there? Uh, is that the, the regional planning commission? It is part of the part of the regional planning commission. Uh, it is being, I'm going to look to see if Seth is online. Then. Okay. Unmute Seth and bring him into something with a part of the Seth, are you there? I am here. Hey, Seth. Hello. I I did not hear the question though. I I signed on right when I heard the word that right, and then heard something about regional planning commission. Yeah. Well, Brian was talking about um, possibility of joining an application for the Build Back Better program that requires regional cooperation having to do with Rutland 
area region. And I'm just wondering, like, who's who is that group that's that we would be participating? In? Sure, I'm happy to answer that question. So, um, at the moment, it appears that um, the Rutland Regional Planning Commission. Um, is going to be applying for um, a build back to be one of these build back better grants um, with the, um, I believe that the, there's a one of those economic development districts that covers um, Rutland County um, and includes uh, sim similar to the Northern Vermont Economic Development District in our region. Um, Tasha and Catherine uh, Dimitrik, who is the director in Northwest, are, are currently talking to the executive director of um, the Rutland Regional Planning Commission if it makes sense to have a, um, a, a joint application to that. Um, in which case, if there was a joint application, it would, you know, Johnson, it would make sense to be um, part of that uh, joint application. Um, if that doesn't make if that doesn't make sense, and the Northern Vermont Economic Development District is not part of it, I believe it would be the Rutland Regional Pl Commission as the as the lead. I believe is the current structure. Um, it is it is evolving very quickly, however, so um, that that could change. Um, what we're we're what we're trying to do is not have Vermont compete with Vermont. Um, does if that does that make sense? Uh, it makes sense that we wouldn't want to compete with Vermont. Yeah, I, it just seems like a a wide region for Vermont. I, I haven't heard of that sort of cooperative effort north, south, and west before. But it sounds interesting. So what's the next step on that? Just you, Brian, and Seth working together with, with those folks on. Yeah, uh, that's really where we're at with that one. We don't need a firm uh, official commitment from the board in order to continue that work. Um, we're not really at that stage yet. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's quite a bit of money. This is a good, we're a good target for it. Uh, I'm at this time not aware of any local managers going to be required. Uh, so this has, it's a long shot, but it does have a really good outcome. Yeah. So there'd be no concern. So, uh, hi, Seth. So if Rockland were the one managing this, like there's no concern about the earmarking of funds, the earmarking is probably the wrong word, but we wouldn't have to worry about the management because it would be clearly defined the distribution. Yes, it would. So it sounds like it's in its infancy stage right now. We're coming to it a little bit later. Uh, Rutland has, has been working on this. I'm not, I think this is all developing pretty fast, uh, but Rutland was, had already started working on it. Uh, I'm not sure how long they had been, but we learned about it last week and uh, we're trying to join now. Uh, like Seth said, Tasha and their regional director are, are in communication. So it looks like a worthwhile place to put some focus. Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, just generally speaking, the TIF is really not appetizing to me at all, um, given where we're at right now, because aside from this build back better, which I'm sure is a great opportunity. I can't help but think there's, think there's just going to continue to be grant funding about economic development out there, given where we are with the pandemic. And I prefer we try to not look at any blown scenario if we can avoid it. Okay. Personally, I don't know what the rest of the board thinks. Yeah. I think that's going to be heavy lift anyways. Yeah. That, it, Absolutely, what we do. I mean, it is I, that, that's more than anything. My, my problem with it is uh, 
I see that this could be a lot of work that doesn't go anywhere. It's a lot of work that has a high potential of voice where there's probably different discussions. But... There are members in the, the state legislature who really want TIFs to make TIFs workable for small communities. And the current program is just not workable for small communities. So they want some alternatives. So there are people outside of our own delegation that want this to work. So I think it's a reasonably high chance of success, but uh, there also, I also see this uncharitably maybe as them farming out a lot of work to small towns of right. we don't know how to design this program so you do it and we'll see if we like it i think we'll go back to polling our legislators and see if it's something that's even worth yeah so i won't take it off the table but like I said, it's not my it's not top of my list okay Anything all right else with that if not thank you seth Earlier. Uh, he probably hit mute again. Okay. Uh, I, I don't. We've got our setting on so that people can't unmute themselves. Okay. Uh, the Regional Emergency Management Committee. Yeah. So uh, the Regional Emergency Management Committee uh, that LCPC is assisting with doesn't have anything to do with SETS. It's just another LCPC project. Uh, I think Alec is working on this one. Um, would like to have two representatives from Johnson. Uh, their preference is for uh, the emergency management director and a representative from emergency services. I reached out to RJ to see if he had uh, time or not. I haven't heard back from him at this point, but um, we could point our emergency management director at this time. Yeah, I mean, that's. Pretty much a guarantee that one's appointed, and then we'll be able to appoint you until future date. Yeah, I don't have I don't have RJ, and I don't have a great see, alternative suggestion. See if RJ or some, you know, maybe one of the other offices would be willing to serve. Yeah. Well, it's emergency. Or it could be an ambulance. Right. Could be from ambulance. Could be from sheriff's department. And there are one or two officers that are Johnson residents. Uh, yeah, it might be worth polling the NIMS too. So yeah. They get somebody who would be interested. I, I haven't reached out to anybody other than Johnson Fire. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Uh, so, yeah, the purpose is focusing on buyouts of flood vulnerable properties. What's that? What are you looking at? The program purpose. Would be flood resilient communities fund. Oh, this is different. This is flood resilient communities fund. That's the uh, oh, that's something for what? Uh, no, I saw from my emergency yeah. management. I was getting confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is a program through Vermont Emergency Management. I forget it. But that is not our. Uh, so the next, but well, I guess we probably want an actual motion and vote to at least appoint Eric, and then we'll work on it. So uh, second, we have a motion and second. Or it says no. Any <laughs> discussion? The only concern I have is uh, this is a transition from the regional local emergency planning committee to this new regional emergency management committee. Uh, I hope it has more value than Okay. Any other discussion? Please no. All those things stuff. See what's going on. I think it's moving here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll just wait for the other rep. Yeah. Uh, bridges safety. Don't walk across. All right. So uh we have some continued interest in uh, examining safety around the Twin Bridges. We put in a request a while ago um, that is, I'm told, still underway. Uh, and then. Uh, Wait, what do you mean you put in a request a while ago? 
Uh, some time ago, the board approved a uh, request a safety study more generally from the state. Do you there's a title for that? I, I'm the board's traffic safety comes to mind. Yeah, I think, it was, I think that was it. And, and that was not specifically focused just on the Twin Bridges. It was a, a wider area. Of the yeah. Trucks. Yeah. yeah, I think it went from uh, yeah. Cannon Cove up to Hoag Road uh, because we wanted to include a couple school bus stops in it. Uh, that sounds scary area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is a more specific request for right of the Twin Bridges uh, and a particular pedestrian. Uh, at this stage, it doesn't take any more commitment from this light for it, but it does take take your action to make the request. Does the board want to make an official request? So move motion to accept. Second. Second discussion. If you want to add Casey, you can look right there. Uh, no, uh, yeah, no, I, we, we need them to look at it on the short. And this is, this part of the trans is focused on pedestrian safety. And so the guy said, you know, we, yes, we can look, then we look at stuff like, you know, do you, does it need pedestrian crossing signs? Are there other things that could be done? He, and he this guy knows exactly what we're talking about mm -hmm. and how it's gotten so much faster after the bridge projects, yeah. et cetera. So I just, the, the only thing I thought of else was if, they, if, if they're gonna do monitoring Traffic speed to have it not to have it be hidden and not be with radar, you know, flashing like this is your speed. Just take, just capture reality of what's going on there. Usually, when they do speed studies, they do the, you know, the two tubes and measure the time difference. Oh, across the road. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, would, that would be good. Yeah, we're not trying to change behavior. We're trying to. Trying to record the video. Thank you. Yes. Okay. We have the motion on the floor. Any other discussion? Case, did you say you had something else that you wanted to cover? Or community safety. Oh, back to community safety. Interesting. Yes. On the on our agenda tonight as well. Somewhere. It's an add-on. You, um, you don't see it. That's Believe me, it's there. That's fine. Uh, all those favor signify saying aye. 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 Those both. Okay. Yeah. Salt grind. All right. So uh, I believe the way where we left this was that we had kitted out one of the trucks, the new salt truck, uh, to use brine. So we hadn't yet made a commitment to actually prime that. Um, Jason had done a little bit of research to uh, kind of talk to other communities, what their experience was like. More towns are going to this kind of simplified brine. A uh, number of towns that hadn't been using any brine before. Uh, I believe that Forest Town is going to be trying it out this year too. Uh, and we recommend that we, we use it for this year. We'll be buying it from High Park. Uh, so they've got the equipment to mix it. If we want to keep using it for more than a year, we'll probably buy some of the equipment ourselves. But for right now, we can just buy the solution from that. Uh, and basically, just market rate. Can you buy the equipment? Buy the equipment to mix it again? Yes. Uh, I don't have the price on that, but I'm led to believe it's not. Not very expensive to mix it, it just takes up a lot of room. Uh, high Park already has it. So, so the only reservation I have is, is we know there's a lot of feet pushback on using brine. And I guess I'm troubled that we're only going to see a $600 savings. If it was going to be more substantial savings, I think that would be an easier thing to sell. Um, the voters, six hundred dollars savings is six hundred dollars, but it's not a huge amount of savings on our salt cost. 
it will contribute uh, to less environmental pollution by the salt and less sedimentation uh, by you know, less sand use. Uh, just for clarity, yeah. as we talked about cell running roads, this is just for asphalt anyways. Right. So yeah. you take a road like uh, they call oh, so. take railroads, they call them cell, there you go. If you go down that you want the asphalt course, you're gonna want to put DNA. Anyway. So if we're selling the taxpayers six hundred dollars more for the fact that they're going to be driving on it for the remainder of the eight months, the more still seems like a hard sale. When they wouldn't go for it, they're going to drive on it anyway. I mean, if you're driving down Railroad Street, you're either already were on fifteen, or you're coming to fifteen to go somewhere. Same thing with Hog Back Road, because you're going to go one on nine or fifteen over up Road. Everybody in this town is going to drive on any place. This reduces our environmental impact, saves a little bit of money, but it sounds like it provides a better job for something that everybody that's driving is going to drive on anyways, whether it was from the state or from the town. They're already driving on. Right. So we could push back and save that 200 feet of a lot of these roads, 500 feet. But Good point. I say they try it this year. Do they need a motion for that? Probably they're looking for direction. Right? Yeah, I think, I think it would be good to have a motion for this. We've had a few motions about. I have a motion that we allow the public works crew to use the salt brine on the new salt truck for 20. 21, 22, 22 winter. Perfect. We have a motion. We have a second. I'm not seconding. No. I don't want Ryan. I can have second the motion will die. I will second the motion. Put it on the floor. For any discussion. So I'm guessing. I'm still open to just a short information piece on that. Yeah. Plenty more questions. I think it'd probably be better served by me going talking to you, Jason, or somebody. So I'm still open to it. And uh, I just want to mention there's a good chance of having both But that's right. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm probably not going to go for it. I don't really know. I have had challenging situations driving on Brian roads, and I'm not really interested in that personally. Okay, um, I will bring it to a vote because it was a motion second. All those in favor, see if I'm saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. No. Carried. So move. No. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cares. Um, so now, planning a meeting with you uh, at Public Works and maybe you guys your question there. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. It'd be interesting to hear. Uh, what happened, what your questions are, what your answers are, I would just say. So if it's, you would like to invite me, I would be happy to attend. Well, if not, that's report to report back to the board. Or you can report back to the board, whatever. Yeah. Whatever way works is fine with me, but I'd be interested in hearing this. So I think you'll probably come back before. So yeah. Okay. Uh, board members willing to so at our joint meeting, we kind of talked a little bit about possibly getting a couple of the board members uh, together with a couple trustees to talk merger in advance of the boards themselves talking together. Uh, is there, are there any volunteers to do that? Got one volunteer. I'd be willing to, but the, the village is going to be willing to any. Yeah, this is just a pointing hour to there it, it is. Okay. Yeah, I just think, I mean I think whether they're willing to or not, I think we gotta be ready because we are ready to discuss whatever they are. So yeah, just, yeah, probably we should officially appoint you or as our rep. Look for a motion pointing heaven in 
with that, please sort of rupture. Well, I just want to ask, Matt, are you interested? Because if you are, I would be happy to step away from it. So no, no, I, I couldn't take it from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, never offered anything. Again, I'd look at that motion. I have yeah. word about that. I don't know that we want to officially appoint them as our representatives because this is just a couple people getting together to talk. It's not a sub, an official committee or subcommittee. Unless we want to make it such. I guess I don't know. I just, you know, their purpose would be nobody wants to just get together to talk unless they're going to be officially sanctioned. And what level should it, should they be having public meetings? I guess I saw it would start the whole discussion of the town village. And these would be our two reps to be representing the town in those discussions. And of course, they'd be coming back to the select board trustees. Unless I'm misunderstanding the purpose. Question about the meeting one? Yeah. Uh, it does this if, if two members of the town, two, village, two members of the village, get together to talk about mergers that are not meeting? Oh, I guess it is. You need to be warned and take notes. I, I think if we go to the level of appointing them, um, I really think that we're, you know, there's not a super clear line in the sand, but if we go to the extent of appointing representatives, I think we cross that line where it should be a public. That should be an open meeting. So the thing that I proposed at the joint meeting was not that we work through all of the details of the merger. The thing I proposed is that we at least get a couple of people together so that we can work through what our first joint meeting looks like to talk through both boards talking through what that first meeting looks like so we could have some clear directives for the first meeting. Do you want to talk about talking about the talk? Totally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's but, to but to basically put together like how we can organize conversation with the two boards. Mm -hmm. So we're not just sitting there looking at each other like, oh, let's do this, no, let's do this. We'll already have people who have talked through what we can accomplish in the first meeting or the first couple of meetings as major discussions. Okay. And that was my recollection. And something like that I don't know necessarily needs. Okay. To be an open meeting because there's no decision making. There's no decision. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's the uh, rule of the board, then we'll just do consensus and agree everything that are representing us on this meeting to talk about what we're going to talk about. Thanks for having Thank you for sharing. Good talk. Sounds promising. Okay. Uh, welcome, Senator Update. All right, a uh, quick update on the Welcome Center. Uh, let's see, the, uh, we've got most of the flashing that we were missing uh, from every home center. We're missing a, a piece of valley flashing uh, that is, has been reordered and will be coming in hopefully soon. Uh, at that point, Brian will be able to finish up and uh, we'll be. Uh, we'll be done with this phase. Uh, we are, there's an interest from the public, an interest from the, the Alexander family about uh, continuing. Uh, I'm meeting with a couple of the folks who have assisted with this so far. We're talking about, uh, you know, putting it, uh, working on RFP for uh, trying to select artists to help finish the mural uh, for the, the Trump Lloyd. Trump, Trump, Trump Lloyd. Um, Trump Lloyd is the Pixie's album. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the Trump Lloyd uh, is, is kind of one of our places for that. Other parts that we're interested in is electrification and, uh, you know, Sewer and water improvements there. Um, 
I know we wanted to keep this one a little bit brief, but are there? So the sewer water and all of that stuff, that's not something. I thought that last meeting, maybe I'm just remembering, or last time we talked about this, the family wanted the artist part to continue. Yep. I don't know if that was ever part of the scope. It was part of the original scope. It was not, it was agreed to be cut from the scope of work when we reduced it. Okay, I asked the question because I'm not sure we've seen where the final send, what the final send is. And I thought we had talked about finishing everything that had started before we start talking about starting anything new. Yes. And with the, the flashing being delayed, uh, we're not at the stage where we have everything finished yet. Um, we've got some estimates for it's going to end up, but um, no, uh, we're not finished. And so with that, I don't have concrete proposals for you uh, about what the next steps are going to be. Well, oh, so you tell me, if I may, yeah. um, I've looked pretty closely at the numbers and pushed pretty hard to get numbers in. Um, there are a couple of outstanding budget issues, but conservatively, I can say, and I wouldn't say this unless I'm confident on we're coming in under budget, under $45,000 for this. Yeah, we're coming in over a half right now. <laughs> I wouldn't be very happy about it, but we're, we're, we're coming in at under $45,000. There's some, there will be just some decisions to be made on that, but and some bills that are coming in. But, I feel good about where we're at now. So, and I, I think looking at um, this is a good time to start looking at what's next and start pricing it. And um, the Alexanders are certainly eager to, to get going on, on the, the next steps on it. And they're willing to put some more money into it. So, it's a good You know, well, the on numbers. Um, the only thing that's tricky is <laughs> the supply chain apparently has turned the world upside down. So we've, we've um, reordered the drip edge static from Country Home. I think it's the valley flash. We're missing one particular piece of the roof. We just paid for valley flashing just for this thing. The valley function may have been what kind of what came in and we're missing the drip edge or we ordered we ordered something from country home. Some of it came in, some of it didn't come in, mm -hmm. they're not telling us what it's coming in. Yeah. Um, but I you know I talked to Brian Rain was about his bill and what it would come in at. Um, I'm estimating, don't tell me it's a little bit higher than what it's told me to leave. Mm -hmm. And it's still coming in at like so, okay. um, and actually I yeah, that roofing material, I thought, uh, Brian said, Brian Story has said that, that the, the cost of all of it was going to cost be about $500, I guess, about $600, just because I'm trying to be really concerned about that stuff. We just paid $400 for what we paid for. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, what did you reach out? I think we need to get the final bills paid and know where we stand. Actually, I mean, part of what's in the agenda here is financial hold out, and we're talking about work. How that's confident that will be well. I believe you, but I haven't heard a single number. I just heard the wall. Probably cost 40000 44000 um, So we're talking about um, with every bill that's a bit submitted. Uh, we're talking about 40, well, actually what just came in was $200 less. So uh, uh, $45,050 is my estimate here. Now that includes Howard's bill of $5,200, which uh, isn't yet resolved, and which he's asked us for. That's something that the board not been interested in the past, but I think he deserves an opportunity to, to be here. Speak to that. So the board still has to decide whether it's going to, to pay that. Um, so 
So if we do, it's coming in at 45,000. So 44,000. $800. Um, the only unknowns here are Reinar's bill, which I've estimated at $17,000, is estimated at something lower than that. Um, the question of how it's built and the roofing material, it's not kind of like so those are the three things that are unknown at this point in terms of what we've actually spent. I believe, yeah, there's, there's still on yeah, uh, we are, and, and I, I should have updated the description on this. We are not actually closing this out yet. Uh, that without Brian Molinitis' bill, we're not prepared to close it out. When is he expected to do it? When he completes the roofing, which is dependent on the uh, materials. Yeah, we thought we were getting this done by, the, by, by Friday, and that's not the case. And the uh, Alexanders are interested in contributing more yes. to see some of the more of the project. Yep. Have they provided any numbers? No. Uh, what they haven't provided any, we haven't asked for any. We haven't provided them with a particular ask for any of this. Um, we're really just at the, uh, you know, we're kind of almost done. The Alexanders, Doug, other people are interested in what's going to happen next. Um, so I'm interested in uh, assisting with that a little bit, even though we know that there is not. We are finishing what we committed to before we make any yes. new commitments. But where, where we are with the Alexanders is. They've offered to do more work, finish the trunk wood, make more. And now it's our turn to get back to them to tell them how much it's going to cost. They're, they're asking us how much it's going to cost to move forward. Do we they know? Want to. No, that's why we're having this conversation. We don't want to go forward and get a bunch of quotes without the select board knowing about it and, and being okay with it. So if you get the quotes, it doesn't mean you're going to start. No, there, there, there will be another conversation before we execute anything. And we understand that the select board's position of wanting to finish this project before it makes a commitment to a new project. But I want to, the value we can still get out of this, even though we're not ready to actually close it out. The value we can still get is, you know, making sure that the select board knows that we are, that, that there are more conversations and more people interested in continuing that for next steps, even though we're not ready to commit to them yet. So what would the harm be getting a quote? It's going to take some time that may provide some time for the, the final materials to come in at this finalized project, first part of it. Uh, until that, we're that way on it, it's getting a different impression. The Alexanders seem to get like to continue and they want quotes, go get them, in my opinion. Great. Town's not committing to that money. Town is not committing any additional funds at this time. And we're not, we're not accepting any additional funds at this time. You know, again, there will be a step in between. We're not making any more promises at this point. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Well, as long as we keep moving, Alexanders will probably keep interest. In... But they have definitely expressed that they want us to move on from. Uh, yeah, you know, we've we've been almost done for a while with the yeah. problems with the roofer and the materials, and they want some action on our. Kind of keep a good relationship together, and uh, so we'd like to do that. Okay. 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 Thank you. Asset insurance. Uh, asset are, are 
insurance through BLCT and he is up for renewal. Let's skip it. I never saw all. Uh, we have to complete our equipment inventory uh, and our equipment and property inventory. Things like the Welcome Center uh, were not there last time we had an assessment done. So, so are you looking for permission from the board on a number that we don't know exists? Uh, we will have, like a lot of things, we'll have another opportunity with the dollar amount, uh, but we have to. Kind of commit to this with uh, we have to provide a general commitment without knowing the final um, but yeah, our, our schedule is going to increase. So it says the six percent inflation factor is going to apply to twenty twenty one property values to arrive at the twenty twenty two values. So we should know the property and casualty coverage is six percent inflation. We should have. You're right. We should have our current. And for workers' comp estimates are based on the twenty twenty audited payrolls increased by three point one percent for inflation. A minimum payroll of uh, 275 is applied for constables and firefighters, and the other school is applied very properly. But anyway, the bottom line is that we know that one too. Right. Uh, can we table this when we come back to it after our executive session so we can run down the print? Okay. We'll come back to this later. I mean, so, well, before we just table it, do we? I mean, we don't have options, right? We need property and casualty coverage. And is there any option other than going through the VLCT? There are a couple other insurance companies that work in Vermont that provide municipal insurance. Um, we get a lot of additional benefits uh, working through the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Um, whenever this comes up, I always remind you that I. It worked for Vermont League of Cities and Towns, so I, I never didn't remind us of just now. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, so I, I do have a, a biased view on this, but I think that they provide a lot of additional services and a particular understanding of municipal needs and uh, municipal positions. You know, in the past, almost every town. In the city in Vermont use passive because it's self-insured, so its rates are typically very competitive against uh, private. We have a pretty good record, also. Uh, we've had a couple incidents, uh, but we usually get a discount for having a good safety record. Very quick to take care of. Uh, I know the village. He was still in the fire department burn and the sewer fire got flooded. But we used them to find different tender venues where it's right. But we can come back to it. Uh, so I'll move that down after the final session. Sidebar. Uh, are we going to have to talk about health insurance at some point in the next few years? Uh, we will talk about. Oh, we don't have the numbers yet. I think I might have seen the new ones. I saw the calls, but I haven't seen it either. Okay. It always seems like we were rushing to get that taken care of. Seems like the numbers come out late, and then we have to make a decision. Yeah, I, I think that's got to be. Typically, they come out late and the employees have to sign on before X date, and we have to meet to select it. Yeah, it's a that's always a pressure. We have our, we know, I mean, I just happen to know, but our company has our staff. 
sick mouse from Parkinson's. But anyway, our, ours is negotiated and we know what our rates are going to be for what it's worth. And it's August, I mean, October 4th today. Yeah, we, we got the Blue Cross Blue Shield and I haven't seen um, MVP. But okay. I have. I'll check and MVP might have published before our next meeting or they might, so they sent it to us, they might publish it on their website or I think one year we did have to call them and ask them for it. Uh, okay, we'll come back to acid number nine and move to the end of the meeting with the board's uh, consent. I would suggest that we go to the three items we added I think there'll be quicker discussion in the uh, public works building discussion. I'll give Casey an opportunity to go home. Uh, so I'll, I'll look for the community safety discussion. And so uh, with the community safety meeting, uh, we got a little bit of guidance and some suggestions from the sheriff's department. Uh, a lot of interest around the community. We had good attendance of that meeting. Uh, I think we topped out at 40 people. Uh, and the meeting was generally well received. Uh, one of our specific suggestions we talked about during our planning purchases, which was to pick up a few uh, neighborhood watch signs. Uh, and we want to continue that and continue discussions with uh, some of the residents. Uh, there. Now, I think you've been in communication with a number of folks. Yeah, I've got emails from about a dozen people or, or messages. There's a, Facebook. There's a Facebook group now that's a railroad street community watch. And so people are communicating more around the issue in the, in the community. I've got requests from 10 or 12 people individuals who would like a community watch sign for their house I've offered. Well, I guess I have offered, uh, but the town would pay for that. So I'd like your permission for that. If you, <laughs> you say no, then uh, you're, you figure it out myself. That's yeah. fine. They're about six bucks a piece. Um, if we could get a budget, the sheriff is, uh, department is willing to pay some about half or something. So if I could just, we could just get a couple hundred bucks. Those are for the window decals. They're not window decals. I mean, they could be window decals. I was thinking of something a little more visible. And yeah, other people could come out, you know, put on their lawn that says this is the neighborhood watch area. Yeah, the window decals were like 20 bucks for 100. Yeah, you can get, uh, you can get all sorts of, you can get bridge magnets or something. But yeah, something for just a little bit visible. If you'd like one in the skate park or you know, like one. Other businesses in town. I think it'd be a nice thing to be able to offer. Okay. So, the that. Do you have a dollar amount in mind? Or less? Why do you say like 10? To On support of that, the emotion. So, so well. Okay. A motion to purchase up to you. We're going to walk this up. I just asked a clarifying question, okay, which is, does this include road signage or is this just for lawn signs? Because isn't there are discussions about both? It could be either. My hope is, my, my like, idea <laughs> person, this is me personally, we go in, but. Uh, having lots of smaller signs around the community is more impactful than having another street sign. And our streets, especially Main Street and Railroad Street, are really cluttered with signage to show state signage. I mean, um, you know, three more signs up. I think it wouldn't be as impactful as people have. Thinking about all the cluttered signs earlier, we put lawn signs up everywhere too. It's a different sort of sign that I can six out makes a different message than another sign that says this is why we're expected. Parking world. 
We have a motion on the floor. Second. Yes, sure. yes, sure. So, so the discussion. Did that motion have a, a limit of the hundred? Is that what you 200. said? Oh, 200. Okay. Casey, you want to add anything? Yeah, I just kind of wanted to be available to answer any questions uh, of feasibility, feasibility the state park and fill you in on actually stuff we were doing even before the meeting. If anybody wants to yeah, know. Go uh, the high points are that we've been working with the sheriff's department about cameras and placement and so forth. Um, and within the board, Learn from Roger, Mark, who, and I guess Christian Watson also, that they thought we should move away from game camera, which we already have one of, uh, but instead of adding more game cameras to move to a true security camera. And so that got brought forward to consider, chewed over, thought about for two more two meetings. And we decided, you know, we need to go ahead and move to security cameras. Um, and hope, hopefully the, the, the sheriff's department may be able to help with that. We'll, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's technical issues. We're working that out with them. Um, location issues to make it work. Frankly, it turns out it needs to be on hold. <laughs> so, you know, we're working that out. Um, and also been in much more communication with customer neighbors. Um, okay. Also, we're we, uh, I sent, did a sort of mini mass mailing to everyone. So all mobile home addresses, all Western addresses, Western home addresses about the meeting. And, but more particularly to say, here's what we've learned from the sheriff. You've got to call. They have to know, even if they can't respond, they need the information. If you, if you see something, call them, call them, call them. Because we learned that many of the neighbors, A, were timid, etc. So we wanted to work, we're working on that. Um, and the meeting was wonderful. Uh, we have another committee meeting this Thursday. I'm expecting guests. And, you, you know, it's ongoing. So, and, oh, and we're revising our signs to be more realistic, uh, which brings up the point of for future discussion with this board, really, is, you know, that, that topic that keeps cropping up is do we want to change um, or add to uh, town bylaws, whatever, to have, again, you know, restrictions on alcohol consumption, particularly at the park. Um, right now, because enforcement is such a boondoggle, to, well, not that's the wrong word. It's such a mess. It's such a mess. Um, and so complicated and kind of ineffective. Um, can't contemplate how it will get enforced. So, but, that, but I just wanted to say that I think we need to have that conversation. Um, and I guess the other, the other thing we're doing is visiting the park mall and have talking. The, the, the regular riders there recognize and are uncomfortable with the now nerdy bus that make trouble out here. So it's the it's the kind of communication that. <clears throat> the sheriff is talking about people got to talk to each other about what's going on. So that's what we're doing. Have you, Casey? Uh, one of the things that came out of the meeting was lighting and right uh, motion detecting. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe. That, that's a, that's a thought. I mean, certainly we don't want to park late at night because we don't have to use it tonight. Right. But a motion light, maybe um, logistically. Would there have to be a whole mess of them? Right. I don't, I don't know. Look, first priority is getting the camera going. Um, but a motion, but a motion light, maybe. Or would somebody figure out how to trigger it so they'd have constant light to skate by? I, I don't know. Long and short, the camera's ready to come first. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, maybe maybe motion lights are good. Let's that's what I want to share. Thank you. Anybody got anything else? No. Well, I guess a question too is: are, Is there going to be continuing conversation? I would imagine between the different components of residents. Roger was going to have meetings, right? With the breakup of Railroad Street. I that was my understanding. Is that you know Roger was going to do a little bit of follow up and you know, will. Then at this time, this is our problem. But there might be more in the future, but I don't have the taste. I don't have any other specific actions planned. Right. Um, probably yeah. the problems are going to dwindle now with colder weather, and we'll be back here talking again in the spring. Yeah. Right. Um, one of the things I was interested in for follow up was learning that. Um, Problem with the police is something about how it's a legislation issue that contributes to the revolving door. Right. So I would want to be talking to our legislators about what's up with that. You know, and you know, I that was on the big ticket. I mean, yeah. Just, yeah. 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 Not just some of the skate park problems, but some of the right rural street issues. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and since one of the legislators, Kate, is on the justice area, well, that makes sense. Actually, uh, we typically call them in in December before the session starts with some of our priorities. So All right. There's a time to bring it up. Yes. Okay, that sounds, sounds good to me. Make Thank sure you remind us. Thank you. Kate was on the call. So she, she was. Girl. She wasn't able to stay she the didn't, call, but she, she, she was there. there at the end when that was discussed. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have a motion to buy some neighborhood watch signs. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 And we'll be, I guess, the downstairs kept somewhere and people come to the lobby and get them? Or? Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to hand them over if we're going to give them to Roger. It depends on what Roger's doing with the how actively involved okay. he is with the neighborhood watch group, uh, whether we'll handle distribution or whether we'll okay. have handle okay. distribution. Over the words, we'll post take notices of it. Yeah, I'll look for a we handle it. Me too. Okay. Uh, don't know if I don't know if there's going to be any problem with the one. So, we'll employee resignation retention discussion. Yeah, so uh, Damien, Damien De Gregorio has uh, headed in his resignation this morning. Uh, Given us his two weeks notice. Is that different than the draft policy? Like, was it different? Uh, we're skipping. We skipped that. Camera policy. It, we'll go back to it at the very end tonight if we have um, retention policy. Retention, we talked about? Yeah, so I'm confused. Number nine, we moved to the very end of the meeting. Number eight and nine, we moved to the yeah, end. Yeah, actually, both eight and nine now we moved to the very end. Okay. We're going to discuss these couple of additional items. We're going to add an executive session on um, union negotiations. And then we'll do the executive session on uh, restitution. So, why don't you go ahead? Uh, so, we received Damien's uh, resignation uh, as of today. Um, he's going to finish out his two weeks with us. He's not walking out today, but uh, and then his resignation. Um, yeah, Damien's been a really terrific employee for us, valuable service, uh, but they are offering him significantly more money uh, in the private sector. So he is. So the question is how uh, how exposed are we with 
the rest of our employees for this type of uh, offers? Not to put anybody on the spot. Nobody has, you know, told me that they're resigning or thinking about resigning. But I, uh, I understand that all of our employees have received uh, offers from other towns and private organizations. So we are facing a problem about retention. You know that if. Right now, uh, and how good a pool is there out there? For candidates like when we opened it up for the performance. Uh, There's a, a pool out there. I mean, if we, I think some of the the candidates that we received could be good uh, crew members. Uh, some of the ones that we didn't feel would necessarily make great. Uh, Great leaders, or, or whatever. There, there would be a couple of crew members in that. I don't know whether they would take the position or not, or whether they would want specifically to be a higher level management kind of position. Um, but I do know, looking at uh, kind of the the one ads that are being posted on the League of Cities and Towns, the uh, uh, employment offerings that I see posted to the local roads program. There are a lot of people looking for qualified drivers and operators. Uh, so it is a very competitive environment. Right now. Um, I would recommend that we do that we think about some kind of additional monetary compensation to help keep employees right now. What if we don't fill the fifth position and use that money that we would be paying that person to increase wages for, for the work we're making for? That would be a possibility. I mean, that would free up quite a bit of money. They wouldn't, it would, it would cost us more in overtime, though. So that might be available. What are some of the tools that other towns are using? There's uh, bonuses, sign on, retention bonuses, there's salary increases. That, that's what I'm aware of at this time. It's pretty much those, chiefly those three mechanisms. I mean, you hear about you know other communities doing kind of odd one-off things, but it basically amounts to you know a retention bonus or raises, and for new employees offering sign sign bonuses. Um, we might also think about paying for referrals uh, when we, if we do go seeking another employee. Without having all the numbers in front of me right now, it's difficult to make an exact decision. And I think that this topic needs the board's time. Not we well, yeah, didn't expect a decision. Um, yeah, I yeah. think that. If at all possible, if we could, because we're meeting next Monday. Uh, presumably next Monday to try and, and interview the candidates. I think that would be, that would give me enough time to prepare something. I mean, I got this today. I just did not have enough time to, you know, this is more a temperature taking of an informational that there's going, we're going to have to have this discussion soon, but we can't. He said, we, we can't know what the effect is, what kind of dollar amounts we have to play with. We, we just don't know at this time. So can I just ask a question about the meeting law? I feel like this is something that is about a negotiation. And should we be talking about this in open just, session? Can we be talking about it in executive session? In the general discussion we have now, yes. In fact, that should be an open meeting. If we're going to get into some 
specifics because we probably should be in executive session because we are in union negotiations right now. Yeah. Any specifics we talked about would put Mike and I at a disadvantage. And also, I was thinking about this, you know, it's October 4th here, so it's not too bad. Uh, it doesn't leave us too bad a position, hopefully, but I would like just to figure out how we can um, arrange our compensation package, whatever it is, if we're talking about some sort of pension bonus or some kind of salary increase, if we can somehow make it to incentivize employees to not leave between you know, November and April, um, because that's when kind of we need them most. So if you stay on until you know May first, then you get your yeah, your reward, um, so that people know I'm just don't quit. It's going to be after May. Don't right. quit in February and then leave the town. You know that kind of leave the town in kind a of lurch. Same idea. I do agree that employee appreciation should be moved up. We talked about that. Yeah. Um, and I think that we should add this for our agenda for one day. Yeah. I, I think it's extremely important just without numbers and knowing where we go into executive session. Um, the best work hard to do a good job. So is everybody in this office. Statement and we need to figure out how to do better for our employees. I think that that, I think that that interest level and that we know it's out there is kind of what we need to have going out. I guess we have to do that to accept the means for information. Oh, no. Can we make sure I send them a can we get a letter together? The board to sign next Monday. Thank you for a service. Yes. Yeah. 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 Or you know something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we just wanted to have that very general discussion, but we're aware that we did that. Do have an employee who was handed in his notice? Um, I would now entertain a motion to enter into the executive session. For a moment, the public works building after executive session. Oh, no, no, you're right. Like, yep, yep. Go back to number 10. Sorry. So, oh, number 10. Yeah. And that was you and Beth, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, Beth and I went down and visited the public works buildings last Wednesday. And the uh, public works employees brought up some stuff to us. While we were there, it needs to be planned. Um, it was a really, it was really good. Bad it was great to shake hands with them and everything. Uh, but a couple things that I think we need Jason to have Rick to work on. One item they brought up was the boiler that Ryan said they were working on back in the Krause days. It was on its last legs, so we're gonna have to plan something. Hopefully, we'll push this winter. But we gotta start planning. That would be a Jason new thing planning. Yeah. Uh, a big item that they brought up is water entering the building and getting a bathroom. And they have to use the bathroom with two inches of water in it sometimes. And uh, I was kind of flabbergasted because, on top of being a safety and a health issue, these guys work hard and they shouldn't have to deal with that. It's not aware of that issue. It had never been brought up to us that this is. The first we're learning of it, but it's. I mean, I was aware that there was some discussion a long time ago about the boiler, but. Well, the, the asphalt outside looks like it's above the yeah. bottom of the wall. Mm -hmm. So it would come down from the village garage and that little lane layer right down the asphalt and beat against the building. I can see where water beating against it would get in. Oh, so it's after a rainstorm, it's coming in? My understanding was when it was wet. So you could be fall or rainstorm. Or ice melting. Or spring or ice melts. Yeah. Okay. We at least need some pictures of it next time that happens. Um, we need somebody to get a plan together of what can be done to make it so that doesn't happen. So somebody tried fixing it at some point. I forget who they said tried. See, because they put asphalt build up around the corners of the building. 
divert the water. To try to divert the water unsuccessfully. Well, I'll probably work a little bit. So that we could get pictures of it next time in a plan budget somewhere. Yeah. Uh, the salt shed. I believe this had been brought up when Brian was here, but the water comes down the tire for the salt shed it gets in and clumps the salt up and melts some of it away. So they gotta there were things mentioned, but we just gotta get a price and get a plan probably for next year at this point. Yeah, they gotta get metal and get it away, or they were talking about spraying the blocks because they're just there was a the suggestion of a seal that we might be able to use on the blocks to reduce the amount of water that's in Right, but that is going to save us time and money we're going to be taken care of as a town. Those blocks just set, yeah, they're yeah, just, they're just I think they're waste blocks, yeah. Yeah. and the fuel system down there is not accountable at all for the fact that it's three way split because everybody's got a key, which made perfect sense, but I think something's broken in the meters down there or something. And you can just turn your key on and start pumping and walk away and take the key out and everything. So it's something that we should plan somewhat more in the future about accountability. And the trucks down there are really sweet. <laughs> um, there was a thing, I don't know what they call it, but this thing that they have in the salt shed also. Screen. The screen, okay. And apparently this is old and it is rusting. And you can see that the bottom of it is, will need to be replaced at some point. Yeah. Relatively near future. I mean, we're coming up on budget season. This is the time. Yeah, this is the perfect time to, to raise these issues. It's, and yeah. Jason, or if, as long as he's acting, I guess, or whoever, um, should definitely have that in their budget proposal for the select board. Yep. Um, I imagine I'll be working with Jason, whether he, whatever, whatever the future person has, uh, will want to have. I worked with Jason when Q started, because yep. by the time Q had started, there was not enough time for him to come up to speed and hand make a budget proposal. So we mostly completed the budget proposal before he started. Uh, so we'll be doing that again. And the things like purchasing, um, you know, uh, whatever needs to be done to the salt shed itself, the screener and that sort of thing, that can be budgeted. As far as the uh, diverting water, or, I mean, that cost can come out of our buildings and grounds reserve fund. Yep. Um, I, mean, I don't know who would have a look at it. Develop a plan, but that would be a way to stop that. I think we'll probably try and get a couple. You know, I, I expect it'll be large enough that we want to have multiple estimates. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll at least try. Uh, I don't know what kind of time frame we're going to get for that. But you know, uh, for the, the water, at least, I'd really like if we could fix it before. Yeah. Like, I don't see any value in that. Like you said, with the reserve fund and other things, I, I want to get it fixed as soon as, as soon as possible. Okay. Um, there's a couple other things we talked about too. Oh, sorry, are you done? Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah, I do. There's a couple other things we talked about too. We talked about the sand, and I know we talked about it with Brian, where um, we only have enough gravel, as you call it, um, for a year. All the guys were in agreement on that. Um, and then the other left in the pit. Left in the pit. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Not left in the pit. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, the pile. The, the stock pile. pile. Yes. Yeah. Where they do the crushes. Okay. The other thing that was discussed was the screen. Got the right name this time, Kevin. Uh, screen. Well, it was talk. There was a lot of discussion around the pit, the screening process, all that happens. I bring that up specifically because I think we should invite all of the crew to a select board meeting at some point and 
let all of us listen to their thoughts on it because they have a lot of thoughts on crushing versus buying versus um, somebody else crushing and having our own fit. They have lots of really interesting thoughts around it and um, they were extremely engaged in that part of the conversation. So it was really good. I think it would be beneficial to us all to hear them. Yeah. And I hope it would build morale also to you know, have an audience with people. Well, do it, we could do it for a special meeting so that likely could have not a lot of audience here, not distractions for us. We just a dedicated meeting. Yeah. Um, we could have a session after the meeting about what we're going to do. I'd like to see the results of the survey that was done there still. And actual boundaries that were drawn out. Yes. It was really good. It was. Re I really appreciated the them taking the time and walking us through everything because they really did. We we walked around the whole all of the buildings. And I think it was great. I actually think I should put a little walkway in between the two buildings too because they walked through that field. And that's a different conversation altogether. <laughs> in spirit of getting people engaged in everything, if we are talking about the fit and generalized stuff. Can we invite the owner in and see what his concerns are? Or I what his thoughts are? That way, instead of it being round and round and round, he can sit right here and tell us. It may be worth it because they're trying to get Bert sometimes. I'll reach out to Bert. All I'm saying is to extend, extend the olive branch. If he doesn't want to come, it's not happening. Yeah. Uh, we'll do a little bit of planning about whether that's a special meeting or just our next board meeting, our next regular meeting. But for yeah, for and, and mm -hmm. gravel pit. But I think we, I think it might make sense to have. So we'll, we'll do a little bit of planning about how we want to stay. No, it's not a regular meeting. We always have a four. Yeah. I'm sure these guys don't want to. I think they're going to want a decent amount of time, but I think trying to put them in on a regular meeting isn't okay. going to be too respectful of the time that they we don't kind want, of want to deserve. They give them 10 minutes and say, okay, your time's up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. This is everything you said, but we get out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else on that? You guys did a great job. Yeah. Is that this time to arrange a town wide tour, the whole slide tour? I get me. Still working on it though. Keep working. We were talking about doing about riding the roads together and uh, looking at all of our all of our highways. Yeah, that'd be fun. I have a minivan, Eric. This is me. <laughs> We'll zoom from there. Yes, sir. So, okay. By the way, one of our roads, the only way you get to look at it is you've got to go to water. Yeah, I don't want to see that road. Right? Uh, That's a good story. We did have, uh, we've had a couple of interesting board meetings. We had the one on kayaks. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I don't know. I did that one. Uh, that was a few years ago when there was a proposed uh, river access improvement just on the other side of the NATO's uh, property, not NATO's, uh, Manchester's property, uh, that the River Conservancy wanted to put in. And then after our meeting, we agreed to it, did put it in. Uh, so I'm a big supporter of having creative meetings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, we can work on that and we can get a, a little tour bus or something together. I'm serious about a minute and I can fit seven people. <laughs> now I can, right? Mm -hmm. I can fit seven people. So I'm just um, we'll, put, uh, we'll put somebody on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we can, if, we, if the board wants to, we can make that happen. Uh, well, 
I think a colleague might be willing to support something else. We might be able to get something a little bit larger than your neighbor. And then also has less cozy, but it also has uh, insurance suitable for okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying about fast charging? <laughs> okay, uh, those two items we sent to the end of the line. I guess you got something else? Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I'm Ocean Lander and do executive session discussion. Gotta discuss the negotiation of restitution owed to the town mm -hmm. as the plan. No. First, we want to do the union negotiation. Yeah, we don't have to. Uh, we don't have that one, but that would also qualify under 313A1 uh, because premature knowledge of our uh, negotiating positions would disadvantage the truth. Okay. Yes, I'm also going to go into a executive session to discuss. Discussing the contract negotiation for update of the union Current update as allowed by one of the SA 315A1. A2 actually. Two, three, four. Second. The motion and a second, to second to the executive session. Is there any discussion? See none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Show us in executive session at 58. Aye. 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 Aye.